Hi students. Today's our discussion is about another important chapter. Responsibility accounting and performance measures. Before studying this responsibility accounting and performance measures, we have to understand an organization can be divided into two levels. Centralized management and decentralized management. This centralization and decentralization segregation or division is about the gravity or the importance of the decision making power in an organization. A centralized organization or a centralized management, all the decision making power is vested in the top level management of the organization. If your organization is a decentralized organization, the decision making power can be delegated or can be given to lower levels of the organization. An organization should be balanced between centralized and decentralized management. Centralization and decentralization is one of the key elements in the decision making of an organization. Normally this situation, centralization and decentralization we are taking for the decision making purposes. Here, a decentralized organization is divided into responsibility centers. A decentralized organization we are going to divide into a responsibility centers called strategic business unit SBU. This strategic business unit is mainly used for decision making purpose. Here the decentralized organization can be divided into different responsibility centers number one cost center number two revenue center number three profit center and number four investment center so the main purpose is for what to facilitate the decision making purpose a decentralized organization is divided into these centers cost center Cost is one of the most important elements in the factors of production. Here cost center means responsible for cost only. That means maintenance department is only a cost center because they are responsible for cost only. They are not making any revenue for the organization. Number two. Revenue center. Revenue center is always responsible for revenue only. For example, sales department. Their main aim is to make revenue of the organization. So we can call revenue department is main department of the organization. An organization success will always depend upon the revenue department or the revenue center. Number three, profit center responsible for revenue and expenses. They are spending amount and they are earning also. Example, appliance department in a retail store. Appliance department in a retail store. There is a cost is there. There is an income also there. Because in order to manufacture, there is a cost is there. Whenever this item we are selling, we will get a revenue also. So cost and revenue is there. Therefore, we can call responsible for revenue and expenses. Then another and the last one is investment center. An investment center is responsible for revenue, expenses and invested capital. So this all classification is based on the responsibility centers. The main purpose of division of this centers is mainly for the decision making purpose of the organization now you are able to understand which one is a cost center 
which one is a profit center and which one is a investment center and which one is revenue center next we have to discuss the performance measures how we are going to find out the performance measures of the organization cost revenue and profit centers how you are doing your performance measuring performance measure is always depends upon cost and effect relationship in order to decide or in order to take any information related to performance measures we have to uh, decide what is the cause and what is the effect cause and effect relationship is one of the key element in the performance measures here in order to measure the performance of the organization based on the cost revenue and profit center we can do variance analysis contribution margin approach related to financial accounting and the segment reporting if you need we can do a product profitability analysis how your product is in the market profitable or not that analysis you can do that one so all these analysis always based on the decision making purpose of the organization so cause and effect relationship is very important then how we can do a variance analysis variance analysis is most important technique used to by all of the organizations in order to analyze actual and uh, uh, budgeted one sometimes budgeted and actual there is a difference is there in order to find out these variances variance include material variance labor variance overhead variance fixed cost variance variable overhead variance so many variance analysis we can do from this variance analysis technique next one is contribution margin sales minus variable cost we can call as contribution margin so this measure also we can take that one segment reporting also we can do based on the product we can do analysis profitable or not here an example is given for a contribution margin income statement to understand more clearly these points sales is given here variable production costs you will get a manufacturing contribution margin minus variable selling and administrative expenses you will reach contribution margin you can minus fixed production cost and a fixed selling and administrative cost you will reach short run profit margin short run profit margin minus depreciation and insurance you will reach segment margin segment reporting is based on segment or separate unit of the organization we have to discuss of the issues related to product profitability business unit profitability customer profitability an organization sometimes need to calculate the product profitability they can decide this product we have to continue or not then business unit this particular business unit is required again third one is this we have to retain that particular customer or not all these you have to study a detailed analysis about this product profitability business unit profitability and the customer unit profitability so in order to do this analysis you have to measure cost allocation investment measurements and other measures you can take cost measurement is you have to calculate the correct cost of the organization otherwise it will create over costing over costing leads loss for the organization cost allocation there is a direct and indirect cost are there identifiable cost and non identifiable cost are there so you have to correctly assign the cost to appropriate product otherwise the pricing is wrong number 3 investment measurement also you have to do cost expand you need to calculate what is the cost required for the expansion of the product or otherwise you want to develop a new product all these you have to identify how much is the investment required 
and what are the resources required for to fulfill that order and how much is the and what is the timing of return for that particular investment then some other measures also you have to take that is if any non value added cost or non value items are included you have to remove that one you have to check the efficiencies if any inefficiency scenario is there you can remove that one so in order to do the analysis or the issues related to product and profitability business unit profitability customer there is a cost measurement you have to check allocation criteria you have to properly check and investment measure also you have to check and other measures also should consider next we have to do the performance measures for the investment center investment centers are always concentrated or in confined to expenses income and separate investment also in order to measure this investment center we can use two methods for as a performance measure number 1 return on investment criteria return on investment is otherwise known as roi so you have to calculate the return on investment in each project return on investment is equal to income from business unit income means profit from business unit we can call as operating income of the business it is otherwise known as ebit earning before interest and tax divided by the total asset of the business unit so income from business unit divided by total asset of the business unit you will get return on investment we can call as roi another criteria or another method is ri first one is roi and the second one is ri this is little improvement on return on investment residual income residual income means income from business unit that you can call as here income from business unit operating income minus asset of the business into required rate or the normal rate of the organization so income from business minus the normal return from the business is known as residual income so the calculation of return on investment and the residual income both are very important factor in relation to investment sector return on investment is equal to income or profit from the business unit divided by total asset of the business unit profit divided by total asset multiplied by 100 you will get the percentage here how much is income from business minus how much is your return from asset normal return from asset take the difference is known as residual income so you have to calculate return on investment and residual income concept also next common cost explanation common cost is another important cost we can call as shared cost a cost which is shared by two or more department is known as common cost the allocation of common cost is the problem of any organization how you can allocate the cost or the shared cost to a particular section or a particular unit so in order to allocate the common cost of the organization we can use stand alone method and we can use incremental method common cost may be a cost of the product or an activity or a facility or a services provided stand alone method under stand alone method joint cost or the common cost is allocated certain basis will be there base will be based on salary based on number of employees based on area square feet we can divide the cost second one is some organizations are following incremental method incremental method means descending order descending order means traceable cost you allocate first traceable cost secondly you allocate the common cost based on the traceable cost so two methods are used 
allocation of the common cost the stand alone method and incremental cost method next transfer pricing transfer pricing means amount charged by one segment to another segment in the same organization one segment is providing some services to another segment in the same group or in the same organization so the service charges or the charges provided by one company to another company how you can calculate the pricing of that product or services in order to calculate the services or the pricing of that service we can use variable cost we can use full cost we can use market price or we can do a negotiation price variable cost is one of the method here we if some organizations are just charging the variable cost only but variable cost is normally charging only utilizing the excess capacity only we are not getting any benefit from that kind of services number 2 full cost full cost is otherwise known as absorption cost we are taking fixed variable all the cost will be recovered from the next segment some organizations are not considering variable or full cost they are doing only the market price of the product what is the market price they will charge because it is better and efficient and more profitable for that organization and some organizations are doing a negotiation price negotiation price means best margin or best negotiation they will do the negotiation price these are the four methods for the transfer pricing thank you